Welcome to The Good Pod. Every Sunday, we delve into crucial Christian topics led by Dr. Barry Napier. Don't miss out on our thought-provoking discussions. By the way, have you checked out our website? ChristianDoctrine.com If you want to explore more about Bible theology ministries, start by diving into the articles under the ministry category. Our content is all about spreading the truth of Christian doctrine. We want everyone to see the incredible power of God's kingdom, just like it's said in Mark 9.1. Join us as we uncover the depth and beauty of these teachings every week. Noah, the real man. This podcast is a response to the scurrilous image made of Noah by a 2014 Hollywood film produced by an atheist who based his script and ideas on the Jewish occultist Kabbalah. For that, of course, see my article 0276. A faithless Christian leader, so-called, made matters worse by saying Noah was not a good man, and this was repeated in the media by the main actor Russell Crowe. Uh, I will not bother to repudiate their sinful attack on Noah's character in detail, but will let Scripture speak for itself. I ask readers one thing. When it comes to giving us the character of a biblical person, who is the best authority? The media? An unbelieving actor? An atheist filmmaker? Or God's Word? The answer should be obvious, but these people try to muddy the waters of truth with their absurdities. Even the Jewish Kabbalah, a book written by unbelieving Jews, got its original information from Scripture and then twisted its meaning for its own ends. Let us then see what God's Word tells us about Noah, the original source having the only definitive authority in truth. You will find 46 references to Noah in Scripture, and not one of them spoke of him as the filmmaker, false Christian pastor, and the actor spoke of him. No, when he was born, his father Lamech named him Noach, or Noah, because he would comfort mankind. The name itself means rest, and is the same as Noach, meaning resting place. The noun is rooted in the verb of the same spelling, which has a number of related meanings. In a sense, the resting of the ark on the mountaintop reflects this resting or setting oneself down. But what of Noah's character as an adult? In Genesis 6, we find that the man's character is firmly described to us, and it is all good. God was to destroy the whole earth because of the wickedness of the inhabitants who numbered a few million or even more. Only Noah was found to be holy and faithful. So in verse 8 we are told, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now why was this? Because we see in verse 9 that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. This means Noah was tzaddik, he kept God's laws and was righteous. As such, he was justified before the Lord. In modern language, he was regarded as saved. The root tzudak underlines this righteousness. Also, he was perfect, tomim, whole, sound, complete, unimpaired, innocent. In every aspect of his mind, heart and spirit, he was righteous and accepted before God, the only man on earth at that time to enjoy God's favour. Again, the root, Tomam, uh, supports the main description. It was the righteousness of Noah that saved his immediate family. This biblical assessment of Noah is further reinforced by verse 22, which says Noah did everything that God commanded. Now who today does this? Noah had many relatives on the earth when the great flood came, but only his immediate sons, their wives and his own wife were saved. It is likely millions of people lived at that time, and all were drowned. This was the choice of God, not Noah. Though he accepted that choice because he was righteous, could he have saved some when the waters came down? Firstly, no, because God only commanded him and his immediate family to go on board. 
Secondly, no, because the ark was very tall, and the door had to be sealed before the waters came down. So even if you wanted to save some, they would not have been able to reach safety on the ark. Even so, it was God who commanded the salvation of only a few, and Noah obeyed. Besides, everyone knew of the coming judgment, and they refused to listen or to repent. Their deaths were basically their own fault. As God said in Ezekiel 14:14, 14, 14, Noah, Daniel and Job were saved by their own righteousness. There uh, they only shall be saved, but the land shall be desolate. Verse 16. Noah's name is held in reverence in the New Testament too, because Hebrews 11:7 tells us, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. The same faith saves us today, yet Noah's character, compared to most of our own, was amazing in its spiritual quality. How many today could reach his knees in terms of righteousness and holiness? Indeed, his faith condemned the known world. Can our own faith condemn present wickedness? As we see in 2 Peter 2.5, Noah was a man apart, one whose character and soul were of the highest caliber. In this text, we are told that Noah was a preacher of righteousness, not just because of his justified spirit, but because of his behavior in the world, a character known to all, pure inwardly and outwardly. How many today show such a character? No, Noah was unique. Never allow unbelievers and atheists to condemn a just man. Never allow them to berate a believer. Instead, jump to his or her side and defend them to the best of your ability. Noah is currently being regarded as selfish and nasty, thanks to lies and ignorance. Scripture says otherwise. God says Noah was the only man of righteousness in the condemned world. Tell others about this. Tell them he was favoured by God because he was just and good. Buck the trend and stop being silent before scoffers.